All right, I wanted to show you this because this is the Dow average monthly from 1929 until 1956. And I wanted to show this for a couple of reasons. First of all, I wanted to sh show you that if you look at October 29, David point to it, that's what everyone talks about, that big red down month. But notice the market came back up and then the crash occurred. So the, the, the 29 drop, even though it happened in one month was nothing compared to what happened through 1930, 31 and 32. The other thing I wanna show you from this chart is look at the top of the Dow and then look at when it was beat, broken again, 1954. So when people say the market comes back, they usually are right, but you know, they probably don't know that at least in 29, it took 25 years. I don't have 25 years left to wait for a market decline to come back. All right, the other thing I wanted to show you, and I'll show it to you more clearly in a minute, when Davis made his money in the 50s, the market was going to all time highs. That is such a critical filter and it's a critical thing for you to know, all right? This is the side next, David, go. This just shows you the S&P 500. This does not include dividends up and down. It just shows you, you know, whereas the market mainly goes up every year, there are some big down, down drafts. I remember 1974 when everyone was talking about a depression. I was in graduate school then. And I remember what happened in 2000 and actually the NASDAQ found more than that. And then you can see in 2008, the collapse. And notice the S&P 500 in the dotted line. If you wanted to, and you didn't want to get it out of the market, of course, you all know that the, you could have stayed with the S&P 500 and eventually you would, have, you would have been above water. But you know what? I don't want to be in the market when it has drawdowns like that. I don't want to see 50% of my university pension disappear in mutual funds. The next. So I wanted to show you this because this is how a lot of brokers, and I tell, I tell my students, I, I ask them if any of them have a parent who's a broker. Usually they don't. I say it's aptly named, your broker will make you broker. And basically what I say, what the brokers will tell you is they'll use a study like this, which looked at how you would have done if you've been out of the market over 25 in 25 days in a 45 year period, all right? And they show you this red line. And what it says is, boy, if you missed the 25 best days, you did terribly compared to if you just stayed in, look at the gray, you just stayed in, boy, you did much better. What they don't show you is the green shot. And the green shot shows how you would have done if you missed the 25 worst days. So they try and sell you, oh, don't try and time the market because look, this is what happens. You, you know, you're gonna miss out. But the point is, if, you, if you're out during the worst days, you're gonna do a lot better. I just used um, stage analysis to get me out of the market. When I see, look at 99, look at all the year in 99, you're in a stage two. And then all of a sudden you get a warning sign. You find that the index is closing below the 30 week average, all right? And then the third, go back David, you get the 30 week curving down. When that happened, that's when I got out of the market, okay? And so you can see then the um, queues were at 79, around 79, 80 that time. Look what happened after that. The queues fell down into the 20s, okay? I was sitting in cash, listening to pundits on the radio say, hey, you can't time the market. Don't get out of the market, stay in all the way down. And they know what they'll say, they don't ring a bell at the bottom. And that is so silly because if you get out of your mutual funds or something at say a hundred and it falls to 20, as long as you get back in before a hundred, you made money, you did fine. So then here's when I got back in in 03, you started to get the beginning of a stage two uptrend, the, the 30 week turned up, all right? So I got in and that year, I know my account was up 53%, which may not be much to you, a lot of you traders, but for someone who's running a research center and doing everything else and not watching the market every minute, that was good for me and for my pension. Now, next, look at in 2007, you're gonna stage two uptrend for most of, part of 2006, most of 2007, then you close below the 30, 30 week. I got out over there, all right? Now, you can see a few weeks later, the queues, this is the queues, by the way, the queues went above the 30 week. And I said, oh my, maybe it's gonna turn, but you know what? The 30 week had been, had been um, coming down 
I waited, it was coming down. I was not going to be in the market. I got out around 43. What happened after that, David? Here's where I exited and look what happened. Again, I got out, sat out the market in 2008, got back in afterwards. And this shows you what the market, you can see you're back to a, in 09, you see you're back to a um, stage two. You can be back in the market. And then when you get in 2010, when it's going below, maybe you take some money off, it comes back up above the 30, you're back in. And by the way, when I listened to the podcast of Stan Weinstein, he was suggesting rather than the 30 week, which is equivalent roughly to the 150 day moving average, 30 times five, um, he uses the 200 day now, but I still use the 30 week. The Guppy multiple, mo multiple moving average indicator is basically two groups of, of exponential moving averages. You don't have to know what they are. They're just simple moving averages. Uh, one thing, um, they just average a bunch of closes. The exponential gives more weight to the more recent closes. So people use both. Anyway, the, the quicker averages are the three, five, eight, 10, 12, 15. And the longer ones are these, the 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 60. I say days there, but this can be weeks. This can be done over any, any time frame. You can go to guppytraders.com and learn about it, okay? But the reason I wanna show you is, to me, when I look at, this, when I look at the indexes with the guppy indicator, it, it, it tells me something else in terms of a pattern I can see. Go ahead, David. So here's the 2000 top. Notice again, all the red averages, which are the faster ones. And by the way, I do them differently in different colors. I reverse the colors of, of, um, of Daryl Guppy because one of my honest students once said, if you do it this way on a white background, then you can say that a good stock has a red, white, and blue pattern, which is a RWB, I call it. Okay, now to point David to the dotted. I also added the dotted line there, which is gray. And that is like, if this is a weekly chart, this is every week's close. Okay, so you can notice during an uptrend, it's the market's closing the week almost always above all the red, red lines. And when it doesn't, when it finally closes below, point to that, David, a little lower, right there, when it's below all the red lines, that can be a warning sign. So look what happened. That's what, this is what the 2000 top looked like. You still were red, white, and blue for a period. When red, white, and blue dis disappears, when that white band disappears, I tend to get a little defensive. But you can see it still kept going up for a little while. And then look what happened. Now you have what I consider a solid downtrend, blue, white, red. This is the 2000, right through 2002. So this is another way of looking at the market, stocks, and ETFs that can give you a really good idea of what the, what the trend is. Thank you.